Queens and Kings of Swift. We're going to turn you into random number royalty because we're going to be working with randomization in Swift. We're going to learn how to generate random values for int types, doubles, and bools. This lesson is chock full of challenges, but I know you're up for it. Let's get at that big learning. Steve Jobs used to say that part of the magic of Apple products was the ability to surprise and delight. Well, there are a lot of ways we can surprise and delight when developing apps, but one tool in the toolkit to surprise users is through randomization. So let's learn how to work with random values in Swift. And we'll first start a playground, so let's create a new blank Xcode playground, name this random, I'll hide the left pane, and delete the greeting. So why don't we start by simulating a six-sided dice roll. Let's create a value to hold our result. Why don't we call this dice roll lower camel case, so we'll say let dice roll equals. And now if we want to generate a random value, we first specify the type that we want to randomize. So if we want a dice roll, those are whole numbers from one to six, so we'll use an integer. So we type capital I-N-T, then dot, and there's an int method called random. So type random, Xcode gives us a couple of options, but highlight the one with just one parameter, in with a colon after it, and it says closed range. Now code completion says this method returns a random value within a specified range, so press return to accept this. And now the range is just the range of numbers we'll consider when coming up with a random value. Now there are different types of ranges in Swift, but a closed range is written this way. Specify the first number in the range, so for us that'll be 1, then 3 dots, dot dot dot, no spaces, and then the last number to consider, 6. That's it. Then press return, and why don't we print out the result like this, print, in parentheses, the string, you rolled a string interp, and in between the string interp parens we'll put in dice roll, then shift return at the end, and I rolled a 5, you might have rolled something different, and to generate a new value you can't press shift return again, you've got to press the stop square just above the console on the left hand side, that turns into a play triangle, click that again, and each time you stop and then play again, you should generate a new random number unless you rolled the same number twice. Cool! So we've just generated a random integer, and that's likely what you'll usually want to do, but can we do this with values of type double and generate a random with decimals? Let's try. We'll set it up the same way with let, and let's call this value random decimal lower camel case, set this equal to, and our type here is double, capital D, dot random, and look at that, we get the same option that accepts a closed range, but this time it returns a double, so let's press return to accept this, and for the closed range, why don't we try generating a number from negative 1 through 1, so I'll enter negative 1.0 dot 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 1.0, and why don't we print the result in a string, so in the next line we'll say print, and in quotes, your random decimal between negative 1 and 1 is string and terp, and in between the parens we'll enter random decimal, We'll shift enter, and we see in the console, and in quick look, that this is a very long number. And we can click the stop square and play again, and each time we do that, we generate new values every time. So if you need random doubles, now you know how to get them. Well, if we can get random ints and doubles, what about bools? Let's try this. Let random bool, lower camel case, equals capital B bool dot random. And the random method for bools is a little bit different. It doesn't have a range parameter, and this makes sense because it only returns one of two values, true or false, so you wouldn't put a range in here. See the arrow and then bool? That means this method returns a Boolean value. So press return to accept this. Code completion adds the parens, but no parameter inside. And on the next line, why don't we print this out with a string? The answer is string interp, and we'll put random bool in between the parens shift return, and we get a random true or false value, and when you press the stop square and play again, you might get repeated values for random bool just because there are only two values to choose from, but this works great too. And now you've got some decent random knowledge, so let's apply those newfound skills in a series of challenges. And these are short challenges, so I'll give you all three at once, then you can pause after seeing the third one, give all three a try, and we'll compare answers. So this first challenge is inspired by my childhood. So I grew up in the 80s, and unsurprisingly, I was a geek. And if you've ever watched the show Stranger Things or Freaks and Geeks, you know that teenagers in the 80s who were geeks played Dungeons and Dragons. And if you have even a passing familiarity with the game, you you know that it's played with lots of different kinds of dice. In this challenge, let's assume that you have three four-sided dice and you're going to roll those. The sum of the three dice rolls should go into a value named result, and then print the result as you rolled a result, where result is the sum of the three dice roll. Then the next challenge is the coin flip challenge. Use a bool to write playground code that will simulate the flipping of a coin. Printing results as either coin flip colon heads or coin flip colon tails, depending on what you get, and try writing this with just a single line of code if you can. And then lastly, use the same messages array that's in your app, copy it and paste it in the playground, then write playground code that will print a random element from the messages array. 
Now this code should consider all the messages, even if you add new elements to messages or remove messages. You can assume that you're gonna have at least one message in the messages array. So why don't you give this a shot, pause, I know you can do it, and you can try one, and if you get stuck, you can watch the answer and then go back and try the other two. But when you're ready, resume, and we'll compare answers. So for our first challenge, and I'll comment out our earlier code so that we don't pollute the print area, we'll say let result equals capital I int dot random. We're gonna select the option with the closed range in here. And for the in parameter, we put in our closed range as one dot 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 four. Then we can highlight the whole int code that generates the random value, copy it. And then at the end of this statement, we'll say plus sign, paste in the random code for a second roll, plus sign, paste it in again for a third roll. So we're adding those three rolls together. Then on the next line, we'll print in quotes, you rolled a string interp and in between the parentheses, we'll enter result. Now shift enter. We rolled a seven, stop, play again. We got a nine, works great. Now on to challenge two, and I'll print an empty string to separate my results. And I'll print open parenthesis in the string coin flip and then string interp. And inside the string interp, I'm gonna enter a ternary operator. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in bool.random. Now this is gonna give me either a true or false. And remember how the ternary operator works? We put in a question mark, and if we generated a true in the first part, so that would be the result of the bool random, either true or false, we'll send back the string heads. Otherwise, if it's false, we put in the colon for that condition, we're gonna send back the string tails. And you can double check to make sure that you've got the right syntax in here. So make sure that your double quotes match up and your parentheses all match up. And we'll run this a few times. Sometimes we get the same value. Sometimes we get different values, heads and tails, looking good. Now time for our last challenge, challenge three. And I'll print an empty string to give me another blank line in the console. And I'll command accent mark to get back to my you are awesome project. And I'm gonna highlight the constant that contains my messages string array, copy this, return to the playground and paste it in. And then to print a random element from the messages array, on the next line we'll print, and in between parentheses we're gonna pass in the messages array. And in the square brackets, we're gonna get a random integer to use as our index value. So I'm gonna say int.random, and for our range in here, we wanna consider values, well, from zero through three because remember with zero indexing, these four values are numbered zero, one, two, three. So we could put in zero, dot, 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 three. But to make this flexible enough to work with any size array, as long as we have at least one element in the array, we can use our friend the count property, remember that? So instead of three at the end of the closed range, we can say messages.count minus one. So this is gonna give us our value. We can see four in this example, minus one, which is gonna be three, which is great. But if we add values or subtract values in here, it will give us the proper sized close range as long as the array has at least one value in it. Then we can shift enter and I'll just press stop and square and the play button a bunch of times until I see all four values. And there we finally get a fabulous, that's you. So this works great. Now also know there is a command where we can get a random element of an array, but that involves the tricky concept called optionals that we haven't discussed yet. So we're gonna put that off for a future lesson. But for now, let's head back to our project and here's your challenge. And if you think about this, it's surprisingly easy to solve now that you know what you know about random values. Modify the UR Awesome project to show a random message from the messages array and a random image from the list of images, image zero through image nine. So pause, give this a shot. I know you can do it. Resume, and let's compare answers. So I'm gonna generate a random value. I no longer need this code where I'm incrementing the message number and setting it back to zero if I need to. So I'm gonna delete all of this. And instead of passing in the index message number, we're gonna generate a random number to use for the index for messages. And we know how to do this, so in between the square brackets, we'll write int dot random. And for the closed range, we'll pass in zero dot 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 messages dot count minus one, just like the code we wrote in our playground. And for the image, I don't need this code down here that works with image number. So I'll highlight this and comment it out. You can delete it if you'd like. And here, instead of passing in the image number into the string interp, where we add that to the end of the string image, remember image zero through nine is the name of the image in our asset catalog. Well, instead we wanna generate a random number from zero to nine. And we know how to do that int dot random and our closed range will be zero dot 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 nine. Now, unfortunately, there's no way 
to count up the number of phrases that are named images here. So we have to hard code the value nine, although it is possible to pull that out as a constant if you wanted to you know, put this in a, an easier to find location in your code. But this is gonna work great. Let's try it out, click away, and this is just aptacular. Celebrating your awesomeness with random encouraging phrases and random images, outstanding work swifter, way to apply that big learning. And why don't we go ahead and delete the stuff that we'd commented out underneath the image name. We don't need that anymore. But dang, Swifter, you learned how to generate random values for ints, doubles, and bools. You completed three challenges in the playground, then applied your learning in a fourth challenge, generating random values in your app. You are random number royalty. I salute you, your Swifty Excellency. Keep hacking.